Hey everyone, welcome to another Sunday Musing. Whatever the day is when you're watching this, I hope that you are having or have had a good day and I hope your week was reasonably good. My week was completely crazy. So much happening. Erin started her third day a week working for us this week. She had been only working two days a week until this week and now she started working three days a week because there's just so much to do. Uh, I've been rushing around trying to get visas for my trip to India, also trying to get vaccinations for my trip to India. We'll be doing some, some videos out there focusing on electric vehicles, which is really exciting. Also buying my tickets for Fully Charged UK. You'll be pleased to know that myself, Kate Wharton Elliott and Erin will all be going and we'll be there. So if you want to come and see us, say hi. That's great. The wall behind me is full of our out of office time, which is just crazy because we've got like nearly 40 days between now and the end of July where I or one of the other team members or maybe all of us are not going to be in the office. So we're having to play catch up and make all of the content. So if I'm looking a little tired, it's, it's yes, I've been working too much again. It's a re reoccurring theme here at Transport Evolved. But let's talk about the thing that I want to talk to you about today, which is how long should a car be designed to last? You know, I've been thinking about this quite a lot lately. I was down in Southern California recently and I was driving a, a Volkswagen Beetle that had been converted by uh, EV, EV West. It was one of those electric Beetles. And, you know, this is a car that was 50 plus years old and it still drove just fine. And then I thought about my own classic cars that I've owned in the past, the Morris Minor. You know, mine was, uh, I had a 65 and I had a 61 or 62. They were built on a design that predated them by 20 years or more. And there are still Morris Miners driving around the UK today, 50 or 60 years after they rolled off the production line. They're still being used as daily drivers. And then I look at cars like the Nissan Leaf, the first generation Nissan Leaf that are ro rolling off the production line, what, 2011, 2012, 2013. And they're now getting to a point where the battery packs have started to degrade. Replacing the battery pack, at least if you go Nissan's official route, is cost prohibitive for a lot of people. And so these cars are heading towards a relatively early grave. I mean, our 2013 Nissan Leaf has got a real world range now of between 50 and 60 miles, 65 miles, depending on the weather, 70 if you push it really carefully. And, you know, we're not going to replace the battery on that. So in five or six years time, that car will be really worthless. And as we get into an age where we're starting to think more and more and more about the resources that this planet has, the finite resources that this planet has, we need to start thinking about the lifespan of the vehicles that we use. Of course, some plug-in cars that are coming to market, Teslas, for example, have an ability to upgrade the software features of the vehicle as time goes on. And we've heard of some cars being planned with future upgradability in mind. So Byton has been talking about the fact that it wants its cars to have hardware upgrades in the future. So if a new feature comes out that is non-hardware compatible with what you've got in your car, you can actually pay Byton to upgrade it. Now, of course, Byton's not in production yet, so we don't know if that will actually happen. But I want to know what a good design life is. When I think back of some of the cars of my youth that have existed or that existed that were in production for many, many years. Another great example is the Volvo 240. You know, how many years was that in production? It was a fairly consistent vehicle in dealer forecourts, brand new cars for years and years and years. Whereas these days we're kind of got into a, into a mindset where we replace a car's design every five to eight years and then it's done. And when the car is on the used marketplace, it might last maybe a total lifespan of 10 years, maybe a little longer. And if we want to have a more sustainable future, we need to start designing our cars with upgradability in mind. We need to start our cars, to start, sorry, to start designing our cars with future paths to keep those cars relevant 
and applicable in the future. So my question is, how many years should we be designing our cars for? Should we be designing our cars for a lifespan of 10 years, of 15 years, of 20 years? Should we still be looking at using the same physical boxes 15 or 20 years down the road? Because we've got to a point now where the crash worthiness of today's modern cars, the ability of those cars to withstand a lot of abuse on the road is far higher than it used to be. We've got more and more advanced driver assistance systems that will bring the number of crashes we experience down, hopefully, maybe even eliminate them. And at that point, then the vehicles just become boxes that we ride around in. So what should the design life of an electric car be? What should the design life of a car be in the future? Because I think right now, five, six, seven years is not enough. And sure, these vehicles can be recycled, but wouldn't it be more beneficial to keep them on the road in their current form and upgrade hardware and features as time goes on? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope that the rest of your weekend goes really well. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as the aforementioned comment. If you want to support us, please consider following one of the links below to Patreon, Ko-fi or to our shop on Teespring. We are at a point now where Transport Evolved has grown amazingly in the last, you know, year and a half. Our subscriber count has almost doubled in the last year. We're bringing in far more revenue than we ever did before from our, from our ads on YouTube, but we're also spending a lot more money going to events and car shows coming to things like Fully Charged Live. And we'd like to expand our network. We'd like to expand our studio. We're getting to a point where we're soon going to outgrow this building that we're in at the moment. And so we need more people to make more pledges. And, you know, we, we're averaging now a million views a month. If every single person who watched our content in the course of a month gave us even just like 10 cents, we'd be doing really well. And then I understand that everybody will give us 10 cents, but you know, if you can, please do consider donating because it allows us to continue to expand our network. And several people have asked why we're not going the way of corporate sponsorship. The reason that we don't go down the route of having a car company sponsor us is because we want to remain as impartial as we possibly can, but it relies on your support as well. So if you can, please support us. Okay, begging bit over. I hope the rest of your day goes really well. I'll be back soon with more content. And until next time, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.